We're bringing you another encore this week that is going to blow your mind on so many levels. You can't miss this. Even if you have listened to this episode in the past, stop what you're doing and listen to this episode again. And then maybe again, there are so many gems in here. The transformation that this family went through with their three dogs is nothing short of phenomenal and remarkable. It's literally mind-blowing. So make yourself a cup of tea and listen to this inspirational dog mom share her story. This brave dog mom already shared her life with two large rescue dogs, but when she found out about a special needs deaf dog, she opened her heart and home once again, but it went downhill really fast, and she was faced with three large, stressed out, and fighting dogs and a family torn apart. Stay tuned as I interview Bettina, who shares her heartfelt story. Hi, I'm Kathy Kowalik, and I believe that our dogs connect us to the heart and soul of what really matters in life. So hang out, and we'll take a deep dive into the human-dog connection and explore strategies that will inspire you to create legendary, enlightened partnership with your dog. This is the Enlightened by Dogs podcast. Hello, friend, Kathy Kowalik here, and I'm so happy that you're here with me today, and I'm really excited about sharing with you this interview with one of my Brilliant Partners Academy students. So good. Bettina's life was turned completely upside down when they decided to adopt Murphy who was a deaf dog after seeing his handsome face on the rescue site. You know, and it quickly became apparent that Murphy had a lot more going on than a hearing impairment. Bettina says, we adopted Murphy knowing his deafness meant special needs, but quickly his OCD behaviors that included tearing out drywall and resource guarding turned our life upside down. Soon, it was not only affecting us, but our other dogs too. Bear started reacting to moving cars and bikes, and Mary was stressed and showing signs of growing anxiety. Then Bear and Murphy started fighting, so we had to keep them separated. We couldn't go for walks anymore, and car rides to quiet places didn't work either because the dogs were so crazy in the car now. I felt trapped and ready to rehome Murphy to get our old lives back. And then I saw Kathy's BPA video and I thought, I've tried everything, training classes, private behavior sessions, reactive dog classes. I have nothing to lose. 10 months later, I could take Bear and Murphy in the car again and we could go out for walks. All three dogs could be together in the house again. I stopped trying to fix Murphy, and we have a great partnership now. He turned into a real snuggle bug, and we're helping him to live life to the fullest. Holy smokes, right? Now, let's just say that Brilliant Partnership is the current way of life for Bettina and her entire family these days. And uh, more recently, Bettina added this. Not only are we all enjoying our brilliant partner's lifestyle, but recently we had a cable construction worker in the neighborhood, um, even working inside of our yard. The neighbor who was upset and complaining about our crazy barking dogs last year came out and asked me why he hadn't heard my dogs barking at all. Wow, I'm so proud of my three fur kids. BPA has been such a great experience for all of us, and the support group is great. I am forever grateful. 
I'm really delighted to share this interview with Patino with you, and I don't really have anything more to add, so let's just dive in and listen to the interview with Patino. It's so good. I'm Bettina. I live in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. We have three dogs, Mary, Bear, and Murphy, and two macaws, Magic and Starry. And I've been in BPA for two years now. Has it been two years? Yep. <laughs> Going on three. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. So you have, so you've got, uh, you've got a family of big dogs. <laughs> yes. We have two great Pyrenees and our deaf dog Murphy is a black mouth cur. Yeah. So, so big. So uh, a lot. He is 130 more. pounds. Yeah. A lot more wow. than me. <laughs> wow. That's Taking crazy. Taking me for walks now. <laughs> yeah. So, so I know that you've, you've shared your story on the podcast. Uh, we, 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 we got a chance to talk and, and you've come on and shared your story and many have heard, but I know that there's a few that haven't. <laughs> so I think, you know, maybe just give us like, like enough backstory so that everyone, we have a good picture because I would really love to make sure we have enough time for you to share some of your processes and some of the things that really uh, worked to help you. Because I, I think it's really going to help others understand the depths that, that you went to and, and how things work. So, so give, so tell us, so you had, you, um, you, you, you and your hubby decided to uh, expand your family exponentially, like kind of all at once, right? <laughs> well, we had, a, we had a golden retriever first. After he passed away, we decided to adopt a special needs dog. That was Moose. He had SAS. And um, after a couple of weeks of with us, we decided that we wanted to get another dog for him because he was used to being around other dogs. And we just wanted to make sure that we had another dog for him. So we got Bear. Bear was at the time six months old, very laid back, and those two hit it off immediately. And uh, a week later, we found Mary, uh, which was actually not in the plan, but Mary was returned and came on the same transport as Bear did. So we thought, ah, she's four. She'll be great. So let's get her too. So we ended up with three dogs within a few weeks. And they were a match made in heaven. We went on walks. We went hiking. We went for ice cream. We had them all in the same car. We didn't have any issues whatsoever. It was like amazing. They were great. I have an in-home daycare. They loved the kids. They had no issues with the neighbors. The neighbor kids came over and played with them. There was no barking. There was just nothing. They were perfect. We were walking on trails, cars, bicycles, strollers, joggers, nothing. No reactivity whatsoever. So... April, which was about six months later, Moose passed away because he was stage four when we adopted him. So we knew he didn't have a long time, but uh, he had a blast with us and we had our buckets, our bucket list with him and he had a great life. So we're really pleased about that. And then we still had Mary and Bear, of course. And we weren't really thinking about adding another dog uh, to the household because, you know, Bear and Mary were great. But of course... <laughs> I uh, kept looking at, at the rescue dogs just because I, I really don't even know why. I was just kind of that thing. And I shared always all the posts from all the dogs. So one day I looked and I saw Murphy. He was a special needs. Uh, they said the only um, thing was he was deaf. And other than that, he was around eight months old and, you know, easygoing dog. And I thought, mm, you know. Maybe I should inquire. So I called our foster that had Bear and Mary and I asked about him. And she said, yeah, he's still in Alabama. We don't really know much about him. But if you like, you can call the foster and ask her. So I called Alabama right away, talked to the lady. And she said, oh, yeah, he's a great dog. Um, he's deaf. But other than that, healthy, loves to play with all the other dogs. He's really good. Um, you know, do you want to meet him? So I said, yeah, sure. So on the next transport, they brought him over and he stayed with the same foster mom that had Bear and Mary and Moose too. And she called me up one day. She said, yeah, I think he would be a great fit for your family. And why don't I bring him over? So she brought him over and uh, we met him and he was nice. He was mellow, 
just a puppy, a good dog. So I thought, oh, cool. So I asked her to keep him a couple more days just to make sure that he, he's getting used to everything, you know, because I have a daycare and I didn't want him, you know, exposed to the kids right away and getting getting him too exhausted right away in his first week with us. So I said, just keep him for a few days and see how he is. So she did that. She has a couple of children of her own. And she said, yeah, he did really good with everybody. So would you like him? And I said, yep, sure, we'll take him. And she said, if anything happens and it doesn't work out, no hard feelings, I take him. And I thought, oh, great, what can go wrong? So he joined our family. And the first couple of days, he was not hyper, but he was very destructive to toys, uh, blankets. And if I wasn't paying attention, he would always sit on top of Bear and chew on his neck and bounce on him and bark a lot. That was one thing that I've noticed right away. And our dogs were not used to that. So they weren't really uh, keen about that. So we had to kind of keep an eye on it and keep them separate from each other. But other than that, he was doing great. He went on our walks with us. We didn't do quite as many as we did before because, you know, we didn't want to overwhelm him. So we got him used to things slow. But yeah, he was doing really good. About six weeks after we got him, it was 4th of July weekend, we decided to take them swimming to a lake. We went and after we were done swimming, we went to the park dried him off, came home. All three dogs took a huge nap and Murphy woke up and started spinning. Spinning, barking and running and running up and down a hallway and ripping our drywall off the walls. We didn't know what was going on. There was nothing changed other than we took him swimming, which was the first time ever for us, for him. But other than that, there was no change. So we tried to calm him down. Nothing was calming him down. He was bolting. He was on top of our fireplace mantle. He was on top of a table. He was ripping down everything in sight. He was trying to jump out the window. Um, he was just out of control. We did not know what to do. So Monday morning, we called our vet. We made an appointment. Um, she saw him and she said, what did you do? And I said, well, the only thing we did is we took him swimming. 10 minutes, he had a blast and we went to the park and went home. And she said, I think he is OCD. This is shadow chasing. And I'm like, wow. So what do we do? And she said, well, I'm going to recommend to you to see a behavioral specialist and medicate him because this is not good for him. You can't have him be like that. So I'm like, wow, I don't want to medicate him, but what other choice do I have? So I thought, well, maybe we'll give it a try for a few days and see if it helps him while we scheduled an appointment with the behavior specialist. So we put him on two different medicines, and on day two, he became reactive. Uh, we could no longer open up the crate door. He would try to bite through the crate. He was barking even more, um, growling at us. We did not know what to do with him anymore. It's, it's gotten way beyond what we were feeling comfortable with. Uh, we had to keep him totally separate from Bear and Mary um, and everybody else. We called the vet back right away and told them what happened. And she said, well, take him off the second medicine, keep him on the first medicine. And this evening, when you have your appointment with the behavior specialist, see what, what she recommends. So she came that evening. And by the time she came, he wasn't even <laughs> in his crate anymore. He was just spinning, running back and forth and scratching and biting and chewing. We couldn't put him on the leash either because he would bite right through the leash. We had a muzzle on him just to keep him calm, but that didn't help either. So she looked at him for 10 minutes and she said, return him. There's something not right with him. Return him. Um, he's, gonna, he's not going to be fitting in your family. He's going to mess up Bear and Mary. You have kids. You have a family. You have birds. It's not going to work for you. So we were like, wow, what do we do? So um, we didn't want to go that route, but we really didn't have a lot of choices. So we decided to ask the foster that had him here in Wisconsin to take him and to take him to a behavioral specialist in her town and give him training while our two dogs can go in training in, in our town and to see how we can blend them together and see how we can work this out. So we did that. Murphy left a few days days later to go with the trainer to the training facility and we kept Bear and, Murphy with, uh, Bear and Mary with us and we saw a local trainer and we had him sign up in reactive class and private lessons. Murphy was still on that one medicine but he wasn't calming down. He was not, not getting any better at all. 
So we were visiting him every other weekend and making sure that he still knows that we were his family and the trainer was working hard with him. And she did tell me. hmm? Oh, go ahead. So I was just wondering. So at that time, how so were Bear and Mary, had they had their behavior changed as a result of Murphy's behavior at that point? Or were they still pretty much their normal selves? Okay. Good that you mentioned that. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Yes, Bear and Mary were starting to get reactive. They were at a point where we couldn't walk them anymore. Just looking out the window, they were barking at everything that was going by. We couldn't take them anywhere. We couldn't go on any more walks, cars, bikes, anything that they were okay in the past with was no longer okay for them. They were in constant stress. And so where we had barking at nighttime, Bear was up all night barking. Murphy barked all day. The birds were going crazy. Our whole household was upside down. We weren't sleeping anymore. Um, All I was trying to do was um, read up at night, trying to find things that we could do to help them. And the trainer that we hired locally, she was helping us with the diet, getting him off kibble giving us lots of homeopathic ideas, uh, giving them rescue remedy and CBD oil, doing a microbiome to see if uh, if the gut was was not healthy. We did a fur analysis. We learned that Murphy was high toxicity. So we learned all that, but nobody really put it together for us of what can you do to help this guy and how can you get your other two dogs back to being calm? Now, what we did notice was after Murphy had left to the training, they actually calmed down rather quickly. So in the house, they were okay, but we still could not take them outside. The minute a car would zoom by, they were gone and barking and and just bear pulled me close to Christmas time in front of a car on one of our walks. And in the training, we learned to face your triggers. So yes, we were looking for cars. We were facing our triggers, giving him a treat, turning around and going back. So Bear never calmed down. He was still reactive and he was still pulling because he wasn't calming down. We were giving him a treat, exposing him, going back. Same with Murphy, giving him a treat, exposing him, going back. So this was an ongoing thing. So we weren't going anywhere. So December time, now this is uh, 2017, December, We were baking Christmas cookies. Murphy was back from training. We were all locally in our training now here in in our town. And they started resource guarding. We were baking cookies and Bear and Murphy got in a huge fight. We had to break him apart. And from that minute on, I no longer felt them safe in the house together. I didn't know how to separate them other than using gates, crates and whatever I had. But um, I did not feel safe of them being together anymore. January, we had another fight in the kitchen when they were trying to get out of the door together and Murphy slipped through the gate. And then we had one more big one in February when we were going outside. We had to pass through the garage to get in the backyard and they had another fight. Mm. So those were our three major fights that we had. So after that, we kept them strictly apart. And that's how I found you uh, during one of the workshops. So in the meantime, we worked on their health, we worked on their, on their gut, we worked on everything, worked on their diet, we tried the private lesson, but they were not calming down and neither were we. We were told what to do, but every time we did it, we were exposing them more and more and our bucket was getting fuller and fuller and the barking in the house, the reactivity gotten worse. So we were little, little prisoners in our own house. We could not go anywhere. Wow. Yeah, was, so that was, was that was that. Yeah. That was a yeah. tough six months. And we had many times where we were thinking that, you know, what have we done? We didn't want to return Murphy, but we also didn't feel it was safe to have him in the house with our other two dogs. And we also didn't didn't know what to do. So we were kind of stuck in the middle. Right. And then you felt guilty about yep. Bear and Mary because yep. they yep. you know, they didn't sign up for that and right. Yeah, I felt really guilty. I felt guilty. And we had a lot of complaints. Our neighbors were complaining, you know, the dogs were barking all the time. Murphy had to be crated, which I didn't want to have a dog that has to be crated all the time. You know, what what life is that? We couldn't take him anywhere. Uh, We couldn't even take him to the vet. Uh, We had to have him uh, in the UW Madison University to have him checked out because they wanted to make sure that uh, there wasn't anything else going on with him. And we couldn't even do that because he was uh, such a mess. They didn't want to touch him. Mm. He was just snarling and and barking and spinning. Wow. So yeah, it was it was really, really bad. (sighs) Wow. 
So we talk about a really difficult situation and you're talking about dogs that, that are bigger than you. I mean, just to put it into perspective for, um, for our, our viewers, I mean, it was, I can't even imagine how hard that was for you. Right. And so you decided, I don't, you know, you decided to try partnership and jumped in. Yep, and, we've joined the they, workshop and we followed the safe, calm and happy protocol. We stopped everything. We turned off all the lights because Murphy was shadow chasing. We kept all the curtains closed. We disconnected the phone. We disconnected the doorbell, any noise, anything that could have set anybody off. We stopped cooking because just the plain cooking smell in the house made Murphy fly. He was going, uh, he was reactive to anything in his nose, anything, any movement, any light, anything. So you took, I mean, you, you had to take, well, you didn't have to, but you chose to take safe, calm and happy to a pretty extreme level mm -hmm. because you knew you started to notice all the little small details that were filling up buckets, mm -hmm. right? And because if, obviously if Murphy was disturbed, then everyone was disturbed, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you can't separate that because right. you anxious and made whatever, and so you really started paying attention to all the small details mm -hmm. of what was upsetting to Murphy. And then you just did what you could do, either eliminate or minimize them. Yes, that's what right. we did. Right. So, so we did, this, that, so we did that for a very short time. Actually, it, yeah. it actually went really quickly after that. Once we cut out everything, we stopped letting them, letting them out. We, we only took out one dog at a time on the leash, back in. We started working on our foundation, and within a few weeks, we noticed a huge change. They were um, back outside together. The resource guarding was almost gone. They were, they were calmer. The barking was getting better, and slowly but surely, things were moving along. Wow. So, you, so, you had, so there was a dramatic shift really quickly and what so and and from your perspective like looking back do you think it was just because you you so seriously committed to the safe calm and happy yes the safe calm and happy was our lifesaver i stick to that <laughs> <laughs> to this to this day because um you know we can walk bear and mary again everywhere they they find now they are trusting us we are their loving leaders and they totally cool with that but Murphy still has has issues you know he still shadow chases and he still gets snappy at times so for Murphy the safe calm and happy protocol is the way to go um, we're still not walking him uh, we found a park where we can let him run it's a fenced in area and he's doing great there but walks are still too difficult for him so we mm -hmm. we take each dog as an individual and we do with each dog what they enjoy. We stopped making it all about all three dogs have to like the same thing. Right. And that was really a huge change for us. Yeah. So, so now, so once you have that shift, now you can, you know, you can, uh, um, like Bear and Mary are back to being more calm and relaxed. You can take them for their excursions. Mm -hmm. They can ride in the car again without mm -hmm. going ballistic. Um, they're pretty calm in the house these days. Yes. Yes. They can be outside, um, with the neighbor kids playing outside. We have people coming over, no barking, no reactivity. And in the car, we're back on the trails. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. They right back to where we used to be. Good. And so, and then, and then, so tell us about Murphy. So, um, so he's, uh, it seems like, I mean, looking at your posts and the things like, it seems like his quality of life is, is really good. Yes. His quality of life is great. Um, he um, no longer needs to be in the crate. He uh, spends about two hours a day in the crate total. And that's his nap time. Uh, some days when his anxiety is higher, I give him a little bit more, but other than that, um, he's on the couch. Um, he's playing outside. Um, the thing with him is you have to take it day by day and you have to really pay attention to where his needs are because it's different all the time. He, right, he so definitely, if, if today you notice that the TV is bothering him, you turn it off. If right. today you see him focusing on the lights, you turn right. them off. So right. you pay attention to what right. he needs today. Right. 
and, and pay like attention no big deal, and we know what really. to do exactly we don't yeah. make a big deal out of it we're not trying to fix it anymore he's no longer on any medication we're just using our Bach remedies and he's on vetricines composure chews and that's it um, there are days that I do take him outside that we do go for a little walk but I always check him before to see where he's at before I make that decision so we pay close attention to what he needs Right. And Pierre so, and Mary are no longer reacting to it. To a bear is actually so so nice now. When when bear when Murphy gets too much for him, bear looks at me like, "Okay, now, mom, take him out," and it works great. We haven't had any fights in two years. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. And so, and Murphy gets to go out because you you have you you found the fenced area. Yes, we have the fenced area where he goes plays. And he has is he okay getting there. Yes, he has no problems in the car. He sits okay. right on my lap. Um, he's totally fine. He did he did have an episode in the crate once in the car where the light was bothering him. And after that, he had crate sensitivity for about six months. So we no longer put him in the crate. We keep the car dark when we drive if it's sunny and he's on my lap. And what's nice about it now is if he is shadow chasing, all I have to do is do the name game and the dance invite and it distracts him. And he focuses on that. and then we just take care of it and make sure that he's not, not in the light anymore. Okay, so so if you when, if you notice it starting, mm-hmm. then you you're easily able to mm-hmm. um, yep. keep him off of it, and then you change up the thing that was bothering. Yep. Him, and then he's okay. So, so to put you- to put it in perspective, for example, um, maybe now he reacts to the light once a week. Before mm-hmm. he was reacting to it ten times a day. So this is a huge shift. Wow. And then we have times where for three weeks, it doesn't bother him at all. And then wow. there might be a day where I have to be more careful. But you know, you could tell. It's, it's not an issue anymore where I think like, oh, you know, what am I going to do next? He's doing this. He's doing that. I know what to do. We all do. So that yeah. has really that has really worked in our favor. And he's turned into a snuggle bug. He's on the couch mm-hmm. with us. He sleeps on the couch at nighttime now. Like I said, his crate time is way down. He has uh, neighbor friends that he goes plays with. He has dogs in the neighborhood that we have play dates with. And then his park where he can go and run. And even when we're in a, in a one acre area, I can do the name game and dance and write with him. And he runs right to me. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. It's, I love it. And, and yeah. just to remind everyone, Murphy's deaf. Right. He's <laughs> just deaf. to remind everyone. Yeah, it's just amazing uh, how, how well he's doing. Uh, the, the transformation in the two years is uh, you, nobody that knew him before recognizes him. It's totally amazing. Well, you're, yeah, you're, back, you're amazing and your husband and all the things you've done. Um, well, yeah. it was your amazing program that made it, uh, that made it possible because without you, Murphy would not be here today. We, we were not able to keep him. It was not working for us and it wasn't working for him. It wasn't fair to any of, of them to be like that. Yeah. A dog should not be in the crate and left behind gates all the time. And we were told that Murphy should not be with other dogs because of his resource guarding. So, and we did it. And you did it. Yeah, we did it. So we know, so safe, calm, and happy. Obviously, that was the big thing. What, Mm -hmm. can you pull out a couple of other of the key pieces that you implemented that made a big difference for your family? What What really has been working for us is the meditation keeping everybody safe, calm, and happy, meditating, um, listening to the dogs. Like in the morning time when I see that bears looking funny at Murphy, I pay attention to those things now. But instead of going, oh, my God, they got to fight in the next five minutes, I step in and I say, oh, bear, that's okay. Murphy's just saying good morning to you. Come on, let's go. And bear comes with me. He's no longer um, trying to protect me. He knows that Murphy is part of our family and that we're all okay. And, and that they, is what they trust changed. you. They, they trust, trust us now. Right. Mm-hmm. Because they were taking the leadership over when we weren't able to. We were literally sitting there going, what are we going to do? And our dogs were screaming. They were screaming for help and we didn't know what to do. So we're, they were taking over the leadership. And since we learned how to be their loving leader with your program, we don't have that anymore. Does Murphy still bark? Yes, you can hear him right now. 
Uh, does he still bolt occasionally? Yes, he does. Uh, but that's Murphy. There is nothing we could do about it, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. We accept him for who he is and what his condition is, whatever that is. Because <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah. And ultimately, even if you knew, you would still do the same thing. Right. So, right. 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 And Bea, Bea um, is fine with that. He knows now that Murphy is not a threat, that we have control over it, and that he's fine. And so is Mary. Bea and Mary do their own thing when Murphy is being Murphy, and when Murphy is, is good and is, wants to play, and they're okay with it, then they play. Yeah. So that has been really a, a huge change for us. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so you're, you know, one of the things that, that you exemplify and, and um, lead us, us BPs is your, not only your commitment to your dogs, we're all committed to our dogs, but your commitment to following the partnership lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you just, I mean, you said, okay, I'm doing it. Safe, calm, and happy. I'm, I'm in, right? And mm -hmm. you just, you did all the things and, you know, and stepping into, you know, being the loving leader, really listening to your dogs and really accepting them as they are in the moment, mm -hmm. recognizing when you weren't feeling safe, calm, and happy and factoring all that. So you've just done such a magnificent job of stepping into the lifestyle. And this is why you you have this life with your dogs now this happy life and yeah so well, you gave us you're, you're amazing <laughs> you gave us the tools that we didn't have um, i know we always talk about difference between training and and partnership lifestyle when we went to training we were exposing our dogs to the trigger which wasn't making anybody feel safe calm and happy and it wasn't changing anything when we were getting the tools from you we learned how to work with those tools and how each dog had his individual needs and we were able to meet those needs. We were meeting our needs and their needs and they started to blossom and that was the change. I have nothing against training. Our, our trainer was wonderful, but it wasn't working for our situation because our got dogs were getting more and more stressed and we were getting more stressed and we didn't see any results. And with your program, we saw results within a few days. Just to follow the safe, calm, and happy protocol made a huge change. And within six months, we were able to have them back together. Within eight months, they were back together in the house without gates. And today, I can take Bear and Mary anywhere, and dogs can come by, bicycles can come, strollers can come, and they don't have any issues whatsoever with it. So that to me was proof that the safe, calm and happy protocol was our life changer with all the tools, of course. Yeah. Just doing the protocol is not enough. I mean, obviously you need to do a lot more, but this is a great start to work on your foundation. And once you have your foundation built, well, then the rest is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that we saw that with our guys, it, it really has come, has come together. The beauty about the partnership uh, lifestyle is that it's not just for our dogs, it's also for us. I use this in my everyday life with my daycare children, with my family, with our dogs, with my friends. I use it for everything. And with times like this, I mean, we're all right now kind of upside down with the way the world is, is coming. This is, has been amazing. I think two years ago, if this would have happened to me, I would have been unglued on day one. I have my days, don't get me wrong. There's times that I'm worried, that I'm scared. But um, having a, a family, a community like this, where you can every day open up your, your laptop and see, see everybody and share all your experiences and your struggles and your wins, it's just amazing. This is a no drama <laughs> group. And I'm very, very grateful that I found you and between the coaches and the BPs, you, Sue, and everybody else has just been wonderful. And I, I wouldn't want to miss it. Wow, right? I hope you are taking good notes from Bettina and her focus on being the brilliant partner that her dogs needed her to be. I mean, Bettina has such a big heart and she is devoted to living a partnership lifestyle with her dogs. 
and she's an active ambassador in our BPA community, helping new members every way she can. She really believes in this. Now, if you would love to have a similar transformation in your family with your dogs, if you would love to be coached on how to live a brilliant partnership lifestyle with your dogs by me and by our other coaches and to learn from our other brilliant partners in our family, in our BPA family, then you're going to want to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy As soon as you can, you'll be so glad you did. And I am so eager to be your guide, helping you to build that brilliant life with your dogs. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening in today. And I look forward to connecting with you next week. And in the meantime, just imagine what life will be like when you and your dogs can finally understand one another heart to heart. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening. And hey, if you would like to work with me so that I can help you discover the missing pieces you need so that you and your dog can finally be happy and enjoy life together, then head on over to DancingHeartsDogAcademy.com and request your invitation to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy when the doors open for the next enrollment. See you next time. And remember, a brilliant partnership with your dog makes your whole life brilliant.